What is going on, everybody? How is everybody doing today? In this video, we are going to be discussing a trade that went down during the 2021 season that in a few years could be looked at as a trade that really sparked a young team start and emergence to being a top team in the Eastern Conference. Yeah, so it is the Wendell Carter Jr. Nikola Vucevic trade that went down in the 2021 trade deadline. I'm going to be giving you guys the Chicago Bulls side of things, the Orlando Magic side of things, who I think won this trade, and discussing the overall ramifications that went down pre-trade and post-trade. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and let's get into it. During the 2021 season, the Chicago Bulls and the Orlando Magic were on completely different paths. The Bulls wanted to compete to show Zach Levine they can make the playoffs before he was a free agent in 2022. The Orlando Magic were stuck in NBA purgatory, constantly being too good to get a top pick, but also being too bad to complete in the playoffs. In my opinion, the worst spot to be in the NBA. The 2021 trade deadline was later than usual, happening in late March with the odd 72 game season that year. It was the early morning on March 25th and the Chicago Bulls were the 10th seed at a 19 and 24 record, while the Orlando Magic were the 14th seed at 15 and 29. The Magic finally decided to fire sale that deadline, starting with a massive but surprising trade that sent Nikola Vucevic along with Alfred Camino to the Chicago Bulls for Wendell Carter Jr., Otto Porter, a 2021 top four protected first round pick, as well as a 2023 top four protected first round pick. This trade was a shocker because no one really knew that the Orlando Magic were about to offload most of their veteran talent that also included sending Aaron Gordon to the Denver Nuggets and Evan Fournier to the Boston Celtics. Nikola Vucevic is a good player. Don't get me wrong. This video isn't to dunk on Vuce at all. He's been quite good for the Bulls. In 26 games in the 2021 season debuting for Chicago, he averaged 21 and a half points, 11 and a half rebounds, 3.9 assists, and shot 38% from three. Unfortunately, the Bulls went 11 and 15 after acquiring Vucevic and finished the season 31 and 41, which resulted as the 11th seed in the Eastern Conference. They ended up with the eighth overall pick in the 2021 draft, and we'll go over what happened there with that pick in the Orlando sides of things. The Bulls added Bonzo Ball and DeMar DeRozan in the 2021 offseason, so Vucevic went from the second to the third scoring option and from the second to the fourth most exciting player on that team. Going into the 2022 season, the Bulls had high hopes with these new additions and hoping for a breakout season from the 2020 fourth overall pick, Patrick Williams. The Bulls went on to go 46 and 36, which was their best season since 2015, and it ended them the sixth seed in the playoff. Nikola Vucevic averaged 17.6 points, which was his lowest since 2018. He also averaged 11 and a half rebounds and 3.2 assists. He had a 24 and a half percent usage rate, which was also the lowest since 17. What was alarming was his drop in three point percentage, which went from 40% in 2021 to to 31% in 2022. It's still early in 2023, but he's currently shooting 28% from three for the Chicago Bulls which is getting to that alarming rate. This trade couldn't have gone more perfect for the Orlando Magic. This team was in limbo, purgatory, no man's land, and really needed to hit on the Vucevic trade at the 2021 trade deadline to jumpstart their rebuild. And boy, did they hit it. The major piece coming back was Wendell Carter Jr., who funny enough might fit this current Bulls team better than Vucevic does right now. Carter Jr. had the best year of his career in 2021, averaging 15 points, 10 rebounds, 2.8 assists, and also knocking down threes on a consistent basis for the first time in his career. Right before the season started, Carter Jr. signed what was believed a below market value extension that was going to make him $50 million over the next four years, which is an absolute steal due to his potential still as a center in this league long term. The Magic ended up with the eighth overall pick in the 2021 draft via the Bulls. And while we don't know who Chicago would have taken with this pick if they were still selecting here, but either way, they would have to feel some FOMO on missing out on the opportunity to draft Franz Wagner. Franz Wagner was everything you wanted from him in his rookie season, averaging 15.2 points per game, four and a half rebounds per game, 2.9 assists per game, with a field goal percentage of 46%, three-point percentage of 35%, and a free throw percentage of 86% which is just an absolute elite efficiency season for a 20-year-old rookie. He netted an all-rookie first team honors, beating out other rookie standouts for that award like Josh Giddy and Herbert Jones. Fran joins a list of young Magic players that include aforementioned Wendell Carter Jr., other fellow 2021 top 10 pick in Jalen Suggs, Cole Anthony, and most recently, the 2022 number one overall pick, Paolo Bancaro. Evaluating the talent at Michigan and having the confidence to take him at eight really made this trade look fairly reasonable for both sides to a much larger win for the Orlando Magic, in my opinion. They also have the Chicago Bulls top four protected first round pick this year. And while it's still way too early to tell where the Bulls will finish, the injury to Lonzo Ball, nagging knee issues of Zach Levine, Patrick Williams' lack of development in a much tougher Eastern Conference, it's looking like the pick will have some value to the Magic in the 2023 draft. 
At the time, this trade made sense for Chicago, but over the last season and a half, it's aging poorly by the day. With the Bulls needing a premier rim protector at the five and the signing of DeMar DeRozan in the 2021 offseason, it looks like the Bulls were too quick to pull the trigger on a big trade during the 2021 trade deadline. And while Vucevic has still been a good player for Chicago, you can't ignore what Orlando is building off of this deal and will only add to it this offseason. So let me know what you guys think of this trade down below. Do you view it as a win-win or a clear victory for the Orlando Magic? Drop a like if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.